interconnected muscles, interretinoid muscles. Lateral cricoretinoid muscles, thyroretinoid muscles consisting of internal thyroretinoid muscles or vocalis muscles, and the external thyroretinoid muscles. There are structures above which are less important than these in phonation, though they serve other purposes. We should add them. The external thyroarytenoid muscles extend upward somewhat higher than the internals, and some of the fibers are found in a fold of tissue above which hangs over the internals and forms a pocket on each side. These pockets are called the laryngeal ventricles of Morgagni, and the folds which form them are called the ventricular folds, or colloquially, false vocal cords. There is a leaf-shaped cartilage called the epiglottis. It is attached to the thyroid cartilage at the notch and is a lid for the glottis. It is pulled over the glottis when one swallows. This movement is caused by the action of muscles that extend between the epiglottis and the arytenoid cartilages. This is called the collar of the larynx. It is formed by the epiglottis at the front, the arytenoid cartilages at the back, joined by the aryepiglottic folds which contain muscular fibers. Actually, these fibers are continuations of the oblique arytenoid muscles. Altogether, we have a purse string effect for closing the top of the larynx to keep foreign materials out of the windpipe. Here in the aryepiglottic folds near the arytenoid cartilages are two lesser cartilages, which serve no special function except perhaps to stiffen the collar somewhat. They are called the cuneiform cartilages of Risberg. Here is the interior of our specimen as it is now. The epiglottis has been sectioned. Here is the aryepiglottic fold containing the cuneiform cartilage of Risberg. Here is the ventricular fold and below it the ventricle of Morgagni. Joining all these parts is a membrane which contains a number of glands for lubricating the larynx. It is called the quadrangular membrane which roughly describes its shape. Above the cartilages we have considered is the hyoid bone. It is U-shaped, having a central body and two horns, one on each side. The hyoid bone is called the tongue bone because the tongue arises from it. It is suspended from the base of the skull and from the jawbone by numerous muscles and still other muscles extend from it to the breastbone and other attachments below the larynx. These muscles position the hyoid bone in the throat, high, low, forward, or back. And since the larynx is suspended from the hyoid bone, these muscles which move the hyoid bone may under certain conditions exert tension upon the larynx and the vocal folds within. The larynx is suspended from the hyoid bone in this manner. There is a ligament in front called the hyothyroid ligament. There is a rather large muscle on each side called the hyothyroid muscle. And between the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage is a membrane called the hyothyroid membrane. On each side there are two main nerves which supply the larynx, both of which come from the vagus nerve. The upper one is called the superior laryngeal nerve, and the lower one is called the inferior laryngeal nerve. The superior nerve forks into an internal and an external branch on each side. The external supplies the cricothyroid muscle. The internal branch has several smaller branches passing through the hyothyroid membrane. They contain mostly sensory fibers having endings in the upper mucous membrane of the larynx. 
The inferior laryngeal nerve is the upper ending of a large branch of the vagus called the recurrent nerve. There is one on each side, coming up along the trachea and branching again to activate all the muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroids. These nerves also carry sensory fibers. There is a connection between the superior and the inferior laryngeal nerves. We are now going to see the larynx of a trained singer. This is what the laryngeal mirror shows. Here are the vocal folds, whose edges are the vocal ligaments in the front part and the vocal processes in the back part. Paralleling the vocal folds are the ventricular folds, here and here. The upper parts, which form the collar, will be nearer the camera. This makes them look large and not in perfect focus. This is the apex of one arytenoid cartilage, and this is the other. The lumps in the edge of the collar on either side, here and here, are made by the cuneiform cartilages of Risberg. Here is the epiglottis, and above it, the base of the tongue. Let us observe chest and mid-voice. And now some pictures of an untrained, sensitive subject with asymmetrical vibrations. But now the train singer again. <laughs> 